Cassandra Clare has done it again. She's ripped our hearts out. Lady Midnight is the first of the Dark Artifices trilogy. It goes with all of these books. We met Emma and Julian in City of Heavenly Fire. So we've heard of them before, like we've met them. But now they're a little bit older and like everybody saw the story coming. Like Emma and Julian were going to fall in love. <sighs> Emma and Julian have already undergone their Parabatai ceremony. Like it's done and everything's sealed. Julian has had to be the father of his younger siblings basically because Julian killed his dad to protect his younger siblings because his dad had become one of the Endarkened. His older siblings were part fairy, so they were basically banished slash hidden. But for the most part, Julian has been doing this all on his own. There have been some suspicious murders in LA, but things don't end up being too serious until we get to the point where Julian gets shot. Emma and Julian are at a house where a woman was murdered and there's someone sneaking around on the top roof and Julian gets this like bolt in the side of him from a crossbow. Someone we, we don't know who it is at that point. This is the first time we see something that reaches beyond the bond of Parabatai-ness. Emma and Julian are in the back of the car and they can't tell the Clave what they're up to really because they need to keep the investigation quiet for right now. Mark has been returned to them and they can't let the Clave know about that because they're having this secret deal with the fairies. But Julian is about to die, and Julian begs Emma to try like one more time, try one more Irazi, is that how you say it? The, the special, the healing rune? And Emma does it, and it's obvious that this should not be working. There was some sort of poison on the arrowhead that got Julian, but the Irazi does work. So I was just thinking like, maybe there's like these extra special powers that come to being a pair of tie and in love. From the outside looking in, Emma and Julian are perfect pair of tie. They bounce each other out, Christine even says it like, Emma has this reckless side to her, and Julian has always been the voice of reason. Emma is going full revenge, and Julian's always focused on hope, and they just, they're perfectly balanced. But I think that's one of the things that makes them a great relationship as well. One of the things I love about Cassandra Clare's books is that it just skips different to different people, so you just get, you get to see everybody. I love seeing Mark getting acclimated to the world again. On page 316, he's playing video games with Ty. The box serves the Lord of Lies! So good! <laughs> we also see Mark slowly stepping into his big brother role. Julian, for all intents and purposes, is the oldest brother at this point. But he, like, craves that connection with Mark again. And Mark is talking to him about their dad. Julian was the one who killed him, and everyone says, you know, that wasn't your dad that you killed. And Julian's like, yeah, that's what everybody says. And Mark is really the one to console him like an older brother should, saying that wasn't our dad, he was already dead, you just buried the body. And I thought that was a really good moment of closure for Julian. And then we skip over to this conversation with Christina and Emma. Emma keeps saying, you know, I'm not special, and Christina's saying, you just haven't had your chance to prove that you're special yet. Jace and Clary had a war. With this parabatite mess that they're in, I think Emma's gonna end up being like some sort of warrior to fix this rule, like change something about Parabatai-ness. I think that's going to be a really interesting character arc because she's so fierce and now she's going to be this fighter for love. I think that's going to be a really cool thing to see. Just like to take a moment to encounter the fact that Emma has the best comebacks. <laughs> or the most creative at least. When Sterling it tells, calls her a blondie, she says that she will turn his kneecaps into hubcaps and his intestines into Christmas decorations. Where does she come up with this stuff? We're getting deeper into the mystery and we see that Sterling, at this ball, he was picked in the lottery. And the lottery, I knew it was to be the killer. Like, I wasn't sure why the characters didn't catch on to this because I knew this. And then Emma doesn't make it in time and that like already has killed her. And then he goes, she's the 13th and the last. So these killings are done, but we're really confused about what they're for. And then we get the poem and we don't understand what that's about. And then it says Blackthorns and I'm confused about why on earth this is only like so specific on the Blackthorn family. And it's because it's a of Annabelle, Lady Midnight. So we're like not really sure about what's going on here. Before we figure out about this Lady Midnight business, they said they were trying to bring someone back. I thought 100% they were trying to bring back Sebastian. I got so nervous. Why are we trying to bring this guy back? I We didn't have a villain. The followers are following someone, the Guardian, no one knows who this is. And I thought it was Sebastian, but it's not. Thank goodness. But like by the end of the book, I was getting this kind of evil vibe about Annabelle. I guess we'll have to wait for that one. 
Meanwhile, Mark has spilled a secret to Christina about the hunt, and so the fairies show up, and Kieran is there, and I did not see their relationship coming, but like, I was on board with it. Why couldn't Mark be with Kieran, even if he was with his family? Like, even though he wasn't part of the hunt, they still could have been together, and then Kieran wants to use Mark saying that secret. He was the one who turned him in, and wants him, his punishment to be to go back to the hunt. And that's when I wasn't okay with it because who would do that? Pull him away from his family? I understand if he loves him, but why? And Mark didn't even seem like that was the issue. It was more of the issue that Julian and Emma ended up taking his punishment. He's like, it would have been okay if it had been me who was punished, but because they were the ones punished, I can't love you anymore. Which I understand, like, he's kind of coming into his role as an older brother and, like, that was not okay with him to, like, see his younger sibling and... Emma, who's like basically his sibling, but like not really as we see at the end, but like, and then Mark tells Julian, he's like, I promise I'm going to stay with you. And so like that good came out of it because I knew he had to pick his family. But that was like a really sad way for it to have come about. On page 553, Christina tells Emma, like, I wish I could have been your pair of a tie. Can we make this happen? Is this still possible? Because I would be 100% on board with this. Like, can this happen? And then Emma ends up in Julian's studio. This whole time she's been thinking that her love is one-sided. Like she thought, she's like, oh Julian, if he knew what I was thinking, he'd be like disgusted. Like he would hate me. And Julian like says, you know, like I do love you. And it was just, ah. And then everything takes a turn for the worse because Malcolm is the guardian. This Malcolm who was really meek and like kind of sweet, he's the guardian, like the one who's been like taking people's severed hands. The people who murdered their hands. He's been taking the murderer's hands to make this hand of glory candelabra. That's disgusting. He got Tavy on the beach because Drew was there and Drew trusted Malcolm and she's like, I have this note. He said not to open it and then it blows up, knocks out their communication. They can't call the clave. They were trying to keep it a secret, but now they have to keep it a secret because they can't even call the clave. Kieran is there. We find out that Malcolm killed Emma's parents as part of an experiment to see if this thing to raise Lady Annabelle would even work, like if there was any magic to it, and like the experiment even failed, like, uh, I almost lost it when I thought Diana was the guardian, like I thought maybe Malcolm was part of it and then we see Diana, but she ended up being good, she was like there to try and save Tavy. but like what's her secret? We didn't really get that, like she wasn't there at the end, like why, what's, why can't she run the institute? What's keeping her back from that? Then we have to fight Malcolm. Every Cassandra Clare fight scene, like, who doesn't love a good Cassandra Clare fight scene? It's just like, constantly like this, like screaming at a book. Malcolm says that his followers are all there to watch, and we look and she's like, oh yeah, all their heads are bent in confusion, and then she realizes their necks are broken. That was terrifying. That was terrifying. Oh my gosh. Emma saves the day, she slices Malcolm, she's gotten this revenge, but it's taken away, like a lot of the victory is taken away because she was friends with Malcolm, even though it was fake friendship. We get to see our old friends, Chase, like, uh, uh, he has always has the best lines, just the best lines. On page 611 he says, well either you've been out fighting the forces of evil or you've come back from a much wilder party than we have. And Magnus is there and Clary is there and Robert Lightwood is there, the Inquisitor, the person that we've been trying to keep this away from the entire time is there. I only think we've escaped. All punishment, he's there. But Julian maneuvers his way out of it, which Emma says is almost scary, like how good he was. And like, Uncle Arthur is there and he's had the potion or whatever, like he drank it, but even then, like he's had no clue about what's going on the whole time and Julian perfectly smooths this over. Emma and Julian decide to hide their love Christina and Diego are now a thing again. And then Mark blo kind of blows up at Ty when Ty's like, you're our oldest brother, you can take care of us now. And Mark is not equipped to do so. And then he sees Christina with Diego and he's like, maybe I should have just gone back to the hunt. But no, he shouldn't have, like he should stay. I'm glad he stayed. Kit sends a text message to Emma. He's like, come help me. Like the mantids came because Malcolm died. The enchantments around his house are gone and the demons are there and they're gonna kill his dad. They did kill his dad and they're gonna kill him because he's a shadow hunter. What? As soon as he like pulled a move, like he like jumped over one of them or something, I was like, this kid is a shadow hunter. How did we not know this? And then Emma comes 
And then Tessa and Jem come up. Tessa and Jem are there fighting with Emma. And Jem and Emma, and they're in the same family. And then they're like, we've been looking for you, Christopher Herringdale. They save Kit. And then Emma's talking to Jem. Jem says that if a pair of a tied pair fall in love, they can do magic and that's not okay. And the reason nobody knows about this is because shadow hunters aren't perfect. Like that's what makes them really cool is because they're like, they're also human and angel. And so like they, they would be greedy. They'd want this power. They'd marry their pair of a tie, like in advance, like no, so they could have this power. But apparently it drives you mad and you end up dying from this magic. And like Emma knows, like she's like, I've already seen traces of it. Like the things me and Julian have done are not normal. Like that's like the things they've been able to do with the runes is already that magic. They're already there. So Emma breaks up with him and she can't tell him because Jem goes, it doesn't matter if it's forbidden. That makes the love even worse. And so Emma breaks up with him. She's like, I can, I can deal with this pain if I like don't kill him. Like if he thinks I don't like him, I can deal with that as long as he's okay. So then she does the one thing Julian says he can't handle. She goes and says, Mark, you owe me. Pretend to date me. And then he said, why lie? Like, why lie that they would fall in love? Whew. I can't even imagine the next book right now. I can't do it. The epilogue, Annabelle is alive. So maybe, I mean, Malcolm didn't have any Blackthorn blood, but something happened where Malcolm's blood was in the water that leaked into her coffin. And now she's alive, and I'm just getting a really creepy, evil vibe here. Oh. Five out of five, highly recommend. I just, I don't even know what I can say right now. I can't, can't wait until the next one. And I also can wait because I'm a little scared. My name is Caitlin. Thank you for watching. Bye.